Still Racers and Rental Cars Podcast with your host, Top Fuel Cam, Cameron Ferre, and his co-host, Mr. Top Sportsman, Don O'Neill. What up, Don? What's going on, Cam? Not too much, man. How's uh, Is it cold yet in Indiana yet? <laughs> Funny. Not yet. We're getting close, though. We're getting close. I think we were. We came back from Georgia, and uh, it was actually uh, like 70, 60 degrees, and we left like 90 degrees. So, yeah, it, it's coming soon, but I know you don't know how to spell cold in California. Just I saying. do not. I have shorts and flip-flops on right now, and that's uh, my winter attire. Even though my mm-hmm. wife being Canadian and I have to go to the frozen tundrums every now and again, that's that's a different subject for a different day. <laughs> that's when right? I pull my snowsuit like uh, the Christmas story out of the rafters. But it, 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 there you go. Yeah. So, but dude, so what are we doing? Like, what's going on? Well, we are going down the list of things that we could possibly do to improve our image. <laughs> and uh somehow or another like after the 10th thing we landed on podcast yeah nice so, i'm not sure if that's gonna improve our image or make it worse but hey you know but first of all uh i'm cameron foray uh marketing manager race car driver uh from huntington beach california and who are I'm you donna <laughs> i'm donna o'neill and i have no idea what i put on my business card but i am lucky enough to be in the motorsports world and get a paycheck for it yeah, so that's what everybody's looking for is a paycheck in the motorsports world, right? <laughs> it's way better than a real job, just that, saying. <laughs> that's what I thought I wanted when I was in high school, and here I am, and I'm not sure if it's good or bad at this point in time. <laughs> but, well, you know, we just keep cracking along at it, and who knows if this podcast thing takes off, maybe we can add that to our list on our resume of either successes or challenges that we will learn from. There you go. My dad taught me when I was a young kid that said, uh, you know, the more tricks you know, the better you get paid. So I guess I can add, uh, you know, podcasts to my to my list of uh, things that I've done. The more tricks you know, the more you get paid. Yeah, you can take that in whatever context text you would like. <laughs> but <laughs> he told me that when I was like seven, and he used to always tell me that. So I think that's a really cool deal. So, which basically, more. I think he was going for the. Uh, uh, how would you say this? Uh, always learn from something and you know but i think he probably was maybe referencing some other things too as well but you know okay. my dad's a badass so it's okay he can do things like that there you go <laughs> all right yeah well i probably have a lot of tricks left to learn then because i don't get paid very much <laughs> me neither so that's <laughs> so here we are <laughs> so what, what's this what's this thing called like what are we going to do like you know what what did we name? We named it uh, Racers and Rental Cars or Rental Cars and Racers. I, there's yeah. too many R's in there, so I you think, have to help me yeah, out. Racers and Rental Cars, I think we uh, we stuck on. And, you know, what the hell is that all about? Well, you know, us being racers and traveling the country, whether that's for our, our quote-unquote day jobs or our quote-unquote weekend jobs, we spent a shitload of time in rental cars. And there's a lot of things that go on in rental cars that people don't realize, whether it's uh, doing donuts, 180s, racing your your rental car on Thursday night, street race night, or setting up your uh, your windshield wipers to squirt your buddies when you go through the pits. I mean, there, there's things like that, and we want to learn about that. So, because I need I need more arsenal for my rental car exploits. Yeah, this is the uh, the racers version of of maybe uh, what did they call that show? Uh, Taxi Cab Confessions, <laughs> is, 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 right? Yeah, right? I don't know about all that one. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, you know, we we can. I don't know that this is going to be like a, a podcast where we talk about uh, SVU or Law and Order stuff, where like you know somebody had a had a, a street walker in the back of the rental car that they left at the airport when they when they took yeah. off or something you know yeah. I, I don't I, I personally don't have any exploits like that but I'm, I'm sure we, we're gonna have enough colorful characters on that we could probably uh, have something like that end up in one of the stories this is true this is true uh, racers are, are a good time regardless if it's drag racing drifting supercross BMX whatever like there's a lot of uh, things that go on so I can't wait to hear it and that's we're gonna have a bunch of guests on uh, professional drivers industry leaders you know in the automotive aftermarket and racing talking about their uh rental car exploits along with uh, a lot of industry stuff that uh, a lot of people don't 
really talk about. Like, yeah, there's like some really rad podcasts out there that I listen to all the time um, that talk about, you know, race recaps and, and things like that, that everybody wants to know and stuff. But at the end of the day, I feel like the nitty gritty of people, they want to know like what's going on behind the scenes. Like what, what's really happening with the state of motorsports or the state of NHRA or formula drift or whatever. Like there's always so much more to the story that people don't see. And us, we kind of take all that for granted, like being in the, in the world of, of racing. And so it's funny, like all my friends, that I went to high school with and stuff. Like when I see him in a bar or whatever, it's like, Oh man, like how's the race life or whatever. Cause I live in Huntington beach and like, there's like five people that race in all of the city. So, um, it's like kind of, you know, if you don't surf or skate or anything like that, like you're not cool. So I, you know, they, they, they're interested in seeing like if it's the same as their industries or whatever. So, um, you know, and same for you, I'm sure when you go places or restaurants, like everybody wants the backstory, right? Well, you know, I think the the whole concept with the, doing the podcast of what we're going to talk about, it, it, I guess if you wanted to say we're going to take like a PRI magazine, we're going to take a national dragster, we're going to take a bunch of message forms for motorsports, and then we're going to throw in Instagram and Facebook, we're going to put them all in a big pot and we're going to mesh them up. And who knows what we're going to talk about, but it's for sure going to be about everything and anything that's motorsports related to, yeah. you know, how about how business. to get a, how about how to get a sponsor? <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know. Do you know how to do that? What well, did you say you do for, yeah. for race back? <laughs> yeah. Well, here's the thing. If I was extremely, really, really ridiculously good at it, I would probably be driving top fuel full time right now. But there are some things I've learned along the way that I would love to share with some people because with being the marketing manager for a motorsports company, you get to see what not to do all the time on a daily basis when people send me emails or call me or all kinds of other things that we'll get into later. <laughs> what, what? If I send you an email and say, hey, I need some free stuff, you can't help me out with that? Is that yeah. not, that's not how you do it for the marketing side? Yeah, usually the email starts with, hey, bro, then you know. <laughs> Well, you are in California, isn't that like that's like uh, email one hundred and one etiquette for people on the West Coast, right? Well, yeah, yeah, but if they do the bra like b r u h, then you know it's just this isn't going to be good. It's not yeah. going to be good. No, no. So, but yeah, so we can talk about you know what not to do and things like that, and we have some experience with that. We have a, a really cool program at Race Pack called Team Race Pack that uh, we let the users submit a bunch of stuff that they think is good to you know why why should they be sponsored and then uh we let our peers uh within the office pick the winners and uh with that we've learned a lot of things on uh what not to do to be honest and you know i'm, I'm more than happy to share that with people and you know kind of help their their sponsorship hunt because at the end of the day we all just want to race and do burnouts in rental cars and in the race race cars so <laughs> oh absolutely and, and that's that's a good thing to to be able to share with people because a lot of people don't understand what it really means about getting a sponsor or keeping a sponsor or approaching a sponsor or, or heck losing a sponsor why did you mm -hmm. lose them do you, are you aware of why you lost them was, was there signs and things of that nature so hopefully folks will will tune in and racers will you know, take notice uh, from juniors all the way through the. Oh yeah, I mean, this is this is by no means like a hater nation thing where like we're just telling you like oh like this guy's the worst or we're not just gonna like name names or anything but like just things that you see like within the industry that that people don't know like you know yeah I went to school for marketing in college but uh, you know the stuff they teach you in your class really has no bearing on motorsports and you know maybe there's a couple classes out there that they say is a motorsports marketing class well unfortunately at my college they didn't have that so I had to learn through the hard way and you know uh, there's a lot of printed proposals that are probably uh, somewhere in my garage here that you'd probably sit there and laugh be like wow man <laughs> Interesting. Oh, that's, yeah, no. And, and like you, Cam, I've got a background in marketing and, and going through college and even in my graduate program, there are no classes that's, you know, motorsports marketing to to be able to leverage or lean on to, to bring out here to the forefront. So uh, hopefully we can uh, combine our experiences, both good and bad, and help some folks out as we go through this process of yeah. uh, 
Absolutely. I mean, the biggest thing is, like I said, we're no, Don and I are not full blown professionals. We don't claim to be professionals. Um, no, no, you know, no, no. Maybe no. in our own minds that, you know, we'd like to think that, but, you know, like, like what everybody says, like uh, your Instagram story is just the things that you want everybody to see and, you know, to show how awesome you are. <laughs> oh, yeah. But what no, really no, goes uh, on? You're sitting in a garage doing a podcast with your buddy across the country because you want to share your experiences and hope that somebody else has the same shit going on. <laughs> right. And they're, and they're sitting here listening, going, man, these poor guys, maybe yeah. my life's not so bad listening to this. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, I guess you said you were talking about talking about life in general, like, first of all, who the hell is Don O'Neill? You know, I, like I said, I know you through racing, but let's let the viewers, uh, figure out viewers, who, it, viewers, viewers or, or listeners. Listeners. Well, listeners. You know, we gotta well, go with listeners. We're, we're not sure what, you know, if we're going video style yet, but you know, if we do, oh, let's let man. the listeners hear the awesomeness that we know as Don O'Neill. Like, like how did it start? Man, I thought we were only doing a 30 minute show. My story can take like a, a whole entire 12 pack, however long we were it may talking take. About, well, I, I, have, I have half a beer left, so you better hurry up. <laughs> you may need another few. Uh, man, I'm just a, a kid from North Carolina who went, went down the path of military service for, for 23 years, retired. And so that explains the haircut. Absolutely. Okay. Always. All right. I can and check I, that off the list. Now I know. There you go. Now you know. <laughs> uh, and ended up lucky enough at this point working for a family in southern Indiana who uh, is passionate about uh, RVing and motorsports, drag racing. So I, I'm lucky. Uh, I'm one of those lucky individuals that get to say that they wake up in the morning and go to work uh, in something that they are truly passionate about doing. Of course, I have other things that I do for marketing for the RV dealership and and other business ventures that we handle. But at, in the end of the day, so what you um, mean to tell me that you do things other than race a car, like in I, order to make the money to race the car? Oh, yeah, okay, uh, I got you. Yeah, yeah, I I, I, I do. Uh, I actually told someone the other day, they asked about, you know, retirement. And, and I told them, I said, you know, why did I stay in the military for so long? It was so that I got a check every month that would allow me to take the opportunities that presented themselves where maybe it wasn't financially rewarding, but it was rewarding for what it was I was passionate about doing. So, it, you know, it's not just about the money. And uh, I joke, it, it's kind of tongue in cheek, but I tell people all the time that, you know, if the family decided that they were going to stop racing, I'd probably go home. I'd probably go play golf. I don't know that me working in the marketing world and corporate America is something that I would probably want to do if I wasn't driving a race car. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know. I get a little torn about that. That, that kind of, you know, I kind of get pulled, kind of turn into hot jello when somebody says, uh, you know, what would you do if you weren't doing what you're doing? I, I, I start melting like, like Frosty the Snowman. <laughs> yeah. So, like, what, like, as far as racing, like, so you were in the military. How did you transition from military to drag racing? Like, were you just a fan and all of a sudden you just went and bought a car or? <laughs> No, I actually grew up around it with my dad before he passed. It was just always something that I wanted to do that he did. Uh, and his life got cut short, really, you know, really short. So for me, I just always had that passion that, okay, I'm just going to keep working and working and working until I get there. And, you know, I did and kind of stumbled upon something and, and went into recruiting with the army and drove the army car for a while in super comp. And, uh, kind of always had that notion that I wanted to keep going and going and going. And, and that's what I wanted to work in the, the you know, the field of motorsports. And in particular, in this case, drag racing, uh, I, I've obviously I've had some exposure to um, other motorsports areas and segments and industries. But, I, you know, I kind of get pulled to drag racing because it's what I do. But, uh, you know, if somebody came along and said, hey, you want to come drive a monster truck? I'm, Heck, yeah, sign oh, me yeah. up. Well, 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 <laughs> I say I that all the time. I'm going to try to figure out how to go to monster truck school So because I can't find a top fuel ride. So I might as well try to go drive a monster truck. 
Heck yeah, you want what? I get to crush things? Yeah. This is like back home on the farm? I'm in. Let's, <laughs> let's tear something up. Absolutely. But now, see, I'm different from that standpoint of how I ended up in motorsports. My story is like 180 from how you got started. Just, I mean, completely 180. I'm like not even – if you're in the ballpark, I'm in the stadium parking lot. (laughs) Yeah, I guess guess that's true. Um, My life kind of like growing up in Huntington Beach, I always – you know, Huntington Beach, California – my family was like big surfers and skaters and all that. Like, so I kind of grew up surfing, skating, snowboarding, even we had a house in, in big bear. And, uh, but the whole thing was, is my dad, he owns a graphics company. He's been a custom graphics painter and had been in the auto body industry his whole life. And, um, that's kind of the path I thought I was going to go. Like I thought we were going to buy a body shop. I was going to go to school, learn how to do it buy a body shop. And boom, I was going to, we were going to own a shop or a bigger one than we, do or whatever so um what happened was when i was a kid i was always a guy that was like well you do it first no you do it first and <laughs> so i was always getting really hurt but i rode i rode bmx like for a lot of years raced bmx and that's kind of how i got into like racing whatever like i told my dad i wanted to be an indian guide and he was like a what <laughs> an Indian guide. So, so that, that was, that was the, uh, next day he comes home, you know, it's, you know, we end up with dirt bikes for Christmas. So, and then I went from BMX to dirt bikes and really got hurt. Like, you know, my shoulders and arms and all that are all jacked from, from dirt bikes or whatever. But with my dad being in the painting industry, he was always painting helmets, hot rods, race cars, and like all these cool things. And man, like I always had rad helmets, you know, BMX and moto and stuff, but um, he painted a helmet for, I forget who it was, but it was alcohol dragster driver. Um, I remember it had checkers and it was like rippled on the side or whatever. And we were going to go deliver it at, uh, at Pomona. My dad was, he's always like loved racing, but like never like, you know, he was a fan, your typical fan. Like, yeah, I go to Pomona twice a year and like went to Lions when I was a kid, like, you know, that kind of thing, but never like raced or had a sweet car like he had like a rambler and like was a surf bum so when he was a kid so um so when we went to Pomona like we knew nobody like we just were literally there as super fans carrying this helmet my dad goes and delivers it and I'm like that's so cool like fire suits and like all this rad stuff and uh when we were there I saw the junior dragsters on display and I was like dude like dad like I keep mangling myself in in dirt bikes like I want a junior dragster that is awesome and he's like Dude, we live at the beach. I don't know anything about engines. Like, I can't just buy you a dragster. Like, we have two other, you have two other (laughs) siblings. Like, we have three kids. Like, I can't afford to just go and, like, do that. And, uh, and my brother at the time, like, he's, like, starting to get really big into surfing. And, like, he was taking that route. Like, he was, my brother was the, uh, the badass of Huntington Beach. Like, you know, you know, that everybody thinks that was Tito Ortiz, but, you know, I think my brother was one of the starts of, uh, <laughs> starts of, uh, being the badass. Cause like he, he won all these contests and like, you know, he's a varsity, varsity, uh, surf captain and all that. And like, that's weird that we have that, but yeah, we do. Um, so, um, he's like <laughs> only on the West coast. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So he's like, we can't just buy you a race car. Like if you really want to do it that bad, like you got to figure it out yourself. I'm like, all right. So like I was always like super outgoing and all that. So I started acting and I was an actor for 10 years. And um, I basically started acting and make my own money and bought my own junior dragster operation and trailer motors and all that and went racing at 12 years old and uh, did it myself because nobody was going to stop me and uh, just kind of fell in love with it. And from 1998 until now, like that's all I live and breathe and think. And I mean, yeah, I was always loved like when I was a kid and like going and seeing and wishing I could do it and top fuel is like the coolest thing on the planet and to be able to say that like going from that to being able to say that I've driven one and beaten Tony Schumacher like that's rad <laughs> but as far as like so going from juniors to um to super comp and worked on some alcohol teams and stuff and then started driving alcohol cars and uh then went to uh eventually into top fuel. But during that, I, I was in college, went to Cal State Fullerton. Um, and I was working at a body shop at the time as an estimator. And like, I liked it, but cause I thought that's what I was going to do, but it wasn't like my passion cause my passion was racing. And that's all I thought about. Well, a friend of mine, Tim, he, uh, he's 
and Donnie that I actually work with now at Raceback hit me up and I was working on Leah Pritchett's nostalgia funny car at the time. We met and he's like, Hey man, I work at Racepack. I was like, Oh dude, that's a rad job. Like you ever have any openings? Like, let me know. Like, that'd be cool. And well, sure as shit, like three weeks later he calls me. He's like, Hey man, we're hiring. <laughs> I'm like, dude, really cool. So, and he's like, Oh, but we need somebody with a degree this and that. And I'm like, Oh, I'm still in school. Damn it. You know, like, and so my good friend, Tim actually, uh, knew Roger Conley at the time, the head of marketing at, at race pack. And he called me. He's like, dude, you got to interview this guy, blah, blah, blah. And next thing you know, I have an interview at Hooters and, uh, he hired me on the spot. So, <laughs> and that was, that was 10 years ago. And I started as a sales rep and then went sales and tech and then digital marketing and now a marketing manager. So like I've, I've been able to start from the bottom within the racing industry and I've seen a lot in that time. So I know what it's like to like full on be that guy, like in the stands being like, man, like one day, like I want to be out there and doing that. And then also like in the boardroom too, like I've, I've understood, like I've seen it, I do, I do it. Monday through Thursday, <laughs> like everybody's like the part that nobody, you know, nobody says and or talks about, you know, they're all talking about like what they do on the weekends. But, you know, luckily, like you, Don, like I get to play race card at my day job. Like, you know, yeah, it may not be like full blown, like, you know, making millions of dollars. But if I wanted to do that, I would have stepped back, stayed acting and, you know, made a lot more money. But life isn't always all about money. It helps, but... <laughs> Absolutely. I cannot, uh, I cannot agree with you more, Cam, from the standpoint that, you know, I tell people the same story. I'm not playing race car during the week. You know, we're working. Yeah. Now we, we may be at a racetrack testing. Yeah, we're playing in the race car industry. That's, that's yeah, what it we're is. Not you know, there's playing a lot of, race car. <laughs> right. There's people, there are people that build houses and are plumbers and electricians and, and they work the, the grind during the week and, you know, then they go do it on the weekends and I, props to them because without them, we wouldn't have the local bracket tracks. We wouldn't have the, the part sales that we have in the industry. The industry wouldn't grow. We wouldn't have second and third and possibly fourth generation racers. So uh, we're, we're all in the, we're all in the boat together. We just all might have a, a different size or that we're using in the boat right. for, you know, for a lack of a better phrase. But uh, yeah, no, that's uh like I said, our stories are definitely 180 degrees different for, for how we got to where we but are. But That's what's it, cool it, about racing though. Like there's so many people. And I think that's one of the parts that I love about racing the most in this industry is there's so many different stories out there that people don't realize and see. And I, Maybe I'm weird, but I really enjoy hearing other people's stories because it's what makes the world go around. Like I'm infatuated with how people make money, right? Because I want to be successful in life and I love listening to some guy that owns a pro mod team, like, you know, how he started from the bottom and got to where he was because yeah, it'd be badass to own a pro mod one day, you know, but, but also like he probably owns some legit business in, you know, he, maybe he's building skyscrapers or whatever it is like that's rad and i and they're excelling in their industry i love talking to people that excel in their industry like you like you guys are excelling in your industry whether that's the rv industry or you know on on during the week or in the racing industry for sure and you and you have to have that you know the backstory you know and i i know we're we're going to be running up against time right here and i can get really to levitar I didn't really gasp back about this, but, you know, for us as sportsman racers or the racers that are out there and we're trying to get to the next level and you're in the the boat of self-promotion because the only way you're going to get where you need to get is you got to promote yourself. It's the, the backstory is what's interesting that I feel like gets lost a lot of the fans if you will at nhra events or or even bracket racing for that matter you know if if we could figure out how to per self-promote ourselves and get fans involved and them understand that they're more than likely probably just what we're just alike it's just a matter of what you're doing during the week versus what i'm doing during the week Absolutely. and i think that is that's one of those areas that uh 
is like you i'm interested in i i want to know the guy that's doing he's got a successful family business uh because there's none of us that are out here racing that don't either have people involved in their life or they are personally direct you know directly financially successful to be able to afford to do this uh it's it, you know even if they do have sponsors uh it's definitely has some some sort of financial tie to it so learning from them uh i can totally uh, be a sponsor about that as well yeah well that's what's cool that's what the other episodes are about you know we get to dive into all this stuff and you know so i mean i guess we'll we'll leave it at that i mean there's a lot of things that we're going to be talking about and it's just kind of honestly just talking shit that people don't that don't get to hear about and that's what we're here to talk about you know i mean and you know luckily don was willing to do this with me and you know we can we can do our thing so well, hopefully that, you know, no, but we didn't cause anybody to throw their, their iPhone out the window or their, <laughs> their iPad or slam their laptop on the desk and go, I'm tired. I've just wasted 30 minutes of my life. I'm never going to get back because, uh, I hope they don't do that. Cause we're definitely going to, we're de- educate and entertain uh hopefully a you know a 50 50 slice of both uh but absolutely absolutely, i'm looking forward to uh what we're moving moving forward with here cool well uh i guess uh we'll chat again next week and see what we can do but before we go uh yes uh you know with us being self-promoters we wanted to uh make sure you guys check out uh, racers and rental cars.com uh that's where we're going to be posting a lot of this along with uh, we'd like to thank our sponsors uh race pack racepack.com, dragstersforsale.com, and then also Voice America, who is allowing us to, to put all this stuff and uh, to grow our audience. So uh, we'll see you guys next week, and cheers. See ya. Let's play.